we need to have a conversation about opera because I just got back from watching Philip Glass's Akhenaten at the ENO, the English National Opera, with Anthony Roth Costanzo playing the central role of Akhenaten. And I walked away from it, this being my first opera that I think I've ever seen, by the way. I don't think I've ever seen anything before that was even really opera adjacent. I'm just a big musical theatre fan. But I came away a bit confused. And so I want to frame this very much as myself being the novice here. I don't pretend to have any special knowledge about how things should or shouldn't work in this regard. This isn't a review in any capacity. This is just me trying to share the perspective of a young, new to opera audience member trying to appreciate this art form for the first time. I've seen a decent amount of musical theatre over the years and a decent amount of theatre too. Not as much as I'd like, but I'm working on it. I think last year I saw about 30 shows and I appreciate both ends of the spectrum from all the way over in the sort of Shakespeare straight play, like a bit more dull and drab and classical kind of territory all the way to, I mean, what's the most kind of contemporary style? Th improv maybe. Like I enjoy everything on the spectrum and I think there are qualities there that I can appreciate as an audience member in varying ways, I think, depending on whether I'm really required to intellectually engage with the material or just appreciate a beautiful light show or some amazing score, music, composition, whatever. Like all of those things I can dip into in my own way and get enjoyment out of. And I'm also someone that really at a fundamental primal level loves picking apart media and searching within it for meaning. Like an easy way to describe this maybe is that I was absolutely in love with my English literature GCSE back when I was 15, 16 years old because we'd read something like Of Mice and Men and every single page felt like it had some kind of secret that I could connect the dots with and unearth just by looking hard enough. Oh, what's that? The sound of the horses indicates danger or the pathetic fallacy in the first half of the book evolves in the second half and that also mimics certain character arcs or whatever it might be. Like those sorts of things, they make me so happy. I just like that kind of critical analysis of a piece of work in that way. And that applies to other things as well. That applies to songs that I might listen to completely outside of the theatre. That applies very much to video games that I play or books that I read. It's anywhere and it's everywhere. And so it's that framework that I applied to the show today in terms of my jumping into this new world. And I came away feeling like, and I mean no disrespect to the cast, the creatives, anyone in involved in the production here, but it felt like I was watching like a YouTube video in 0.25 times speed because everything was slow motion the entire time. There was lots of reaching and reaching for minutes at a time and still reaching. And the visuals themselves, what was presented, the blocking and the staging of everything, felt like it was intended to elicit some kind of feeling of symbolism in various areas. We'll get into that in a moment. But at the same time, was weirdly stripped back. It was leaving as much as it could to the audience member's imagination in some areas. I'm going to jump into some of the story or what I interpreted as the story now, which is another thing that I think is a whole conversation in itself that I don't even really know how to tap into properly just yet because I didn't look up the story of Agnaton before I went and I did that intentionally. I'd heard Agnaton before. I love Philip Glass's music, have done for a decade now thanks to my dad. But the story of the opera? No, no idea. Don't know who's singing at certain times. Like I have no clue what's going on at any point. I know that the words are in, I think, Egyptian, Hebrew maybe, and Akkadian, I think it is. And there is some English narration as you go, but that's the only thing that I kind of have paid any attention to. And even when I've been listening to it on Spotify or whatever, I haven't paid that much attention to the actual story being told in the narration. So I'm coming at this just an idiot, or to be more courteous to myself, maybe a willing idiot, a coachable idiot. And so I see this initial scene where there's a structure, a building, and the base of the building has three compartments and they open and 
In one compartment, you have what I presume is essentially the incumbent pharaoh of the past, perhaps. And then in the central compartment is the embalmed Akhenaten, who then essentially through the first act of the play is basically born, gains power more or less, and adopts their role as pharaoh. And then at the end of the opera, you have a similar setup going on at the base of this structure. And that's following Akhenaten's demise, and Akhenaten is essentially returned to the embalmment, if that's how you say that. And so we understand the passage of time, but we also understand the fact that this is somewhat cyclical in its own kind of way. That was sort of what I was interpreting there. So there's some meaning that's pretty kind of fine to piece out from this. But then in other areas, there are things that I don't really know where to begin with my interpretation. So one of the quirks of this production, and I assume this isn't always like this, but I don't know, is that the ensemble and sort of everyone bar maybe the top two, three, four characters, pretty much everyone are jugglers. And so there's this repetitive kind of mechanical juggling happening as this mesmerizing tapestry around certain key scenes taking place. Every single juggling ball is a white little sphere. It's not got anything on it. There aren't any other kinds of juggling balls. They did use occasionally what they called clubs, I think. But the balls themselves were just plain white juggling balls. And they'd be doing a little juggle and passing it to the next person or throwing it to the next person and ending up in this almost perpetual machine of motion. And so this was happening and it was all very interesting and kind of scattered and mesmerizing looking. But then and as we got further through the opera, you see not just any old sphere, but you actually see what appears to be either the sun or the moon or some celestial body of some kind. It's enormous. And Akhenaten kind of climbs a staircase toward it at one point. It changes color. And I think just prior to the climbing of that staircase, all of the ensemble no longer have their regular juggling balls. They now have sort of beach ball sized balls. They're silver and they're and they're chucking them up in the air and then catching another one and switching it round and throwing the one back. And I, for the life of me, can't really figure out what that was, why they did it that way. Were the juggling balls meant to abstractly show the growing of the estate of the pharaoh. I feel like towards the end of the show, they try and explain to the audience a little bit that Akhenaten's actions and life resulted in a lot of the stocks of the kingdom being replenished. So they ended up with four times as much gold, silver, uh, precious linens, things like that, olive oil, things that would be precious to the kingdom. So Agnaton's reign was very successful in that regard. So maybe these spheres are showing a scattered kind of not lacking situation early on, but certainly a kind of wealth of the kingdom that was small and then that grew through the opera and became literally more opulent and uh, more valuable. They became these silver balls instead and it was sort of a celebration of that when they were throwing them around and then you get towards the end and there's a scene where all of the ensemble basically drop their juggling balls and it's when Agnaton is dying and just dropping a juggling ball, like an act where you're meant to catch it and you fail, it's a bit on the nose for that to solely be like, oh, that's a sign that he's dying or he's dead. So I think that there might be something else baked in there. And then moments later, you have a situation where the ensemble are off stage and they start rolling juggling balls onto the stage as they crawl on. And you end up with this litany of juggling balls around the characters in these sort of final moments of the show. And so again, is it the, as Agnaton's reign transferred on, the wealth of the kingdom was dispersed and left in the ground, so to speak, for the next person to claim them, to pick those up and to take them for their own. Like, oh, are we doing that sort of thing? All of this could, from a literary perspective, be completely off the rails. Like, I could be so far from the point right now. I don't have anyone to discuss this with and to sort of nudge me in the right direction. Not that there really is one necessarily with symbolism in this manner, but there's certainly a well-trodden path of understanding these sorts of things usually. Regardless though, 
what I'm trying to get at here is that I have this kind of rough through line of ideas as to why they presented things in certain ways. But the more I think about each aspect of the staging, the framing, like the staircase up, am I just going to imagine what that could have meant in terms of maybe Akhenaten's life progressing, Akhenaten's power growing? Like, uh, what is it exactly that I should be trying to derive from that? And to what extent should that responsibility be on my shoulders to figure out? And I don't have a clear answer to this. Like I said, I'm coming in as a willing, coachable idiot. Just not sure if I'm supposed to sit in my seat. Thank you so much, Amy. Helped me actually get a seat in the show. But I'm I'm really uncertain whether, like, all the other people in the audience, the majority of which are bald or they've got a lot of grey hair. Like, they're a lot older than me, that's for sure. Although I'm sure I'll be grey soon enough, so maybe I should reel those, uh, those comments in. But are they all sitting in the seat going, ah, yes, there's the massive red ball. Yep, I was waiting for that to come up and the symbolism there, I, I understand it so well. I don't even need to worry about it right now. Like all the critical thinking in my brain turned off, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, got the honorary degree, you know, like discussed it with my forefathers and those that came before them. Like they've just kind of like completed it, mate. Like, is that what everyone has done in the room? Or is everyone having the experience I'm having of sitting in the seat going, first of all, why are they all moving at 0.25 times speed? Can somebody please just press fast forward? And second of all, where do we stand with knowing a story versus not knowing it? In a play or certainly in musical theater, if you don't really have an idea of what's going on at a given time, most of the time, it means that the play is kind of failed in some capacity. And I get just to be super clear, the opera is different and I shouldn't be just assuming that one would follow the other, but it's the world I'm familiar with. So I'm using my understanding as a reference frame from that world to try and pick apart how to even apply my kind of critical thought and analysis that I enjoy doing to this new world. The music itself is glorious. Like I said, massive Philip Glass fan. It's beautiful. It was performed perfectly, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Anthony Roth Costanzo's performance, stellar. So freaking good. What an incredibly beautiful voice. And yet, I'm sort of sitting here right now going, well, I could have just paid for a concert if that's all I was going for. But instead, I paid for the full operatic production and was left with like some little nuggets that I really enjoyed. Like I do enjoy the hypothesizing of what those things could have meant, but it just was so drawn out. It was like they could make one point every 15 minutes. And the example I gave earlier from my English literature GCSE, like it was a point per page. So I don't know whether it's a lack of familiarity, meaning that I was tunnel visioning on individual elements when I could have been finding more meaning in uh, broader amounts of time. I also don't know whether that's maybe unique to Philip Glass, because Philip Glass's music is very repetitive in that way. Maybe that's intended. Maybe this is meant to slow down a bit compared to certain other areas of musical opera that you might be able to access. I don't even know where to begin with it all. But I will say one thing, and this is my only critique in terms of something that I actually feel like my opinion might be valid to present here, because for most of this stuff, I recognize I don't know what I'm talking about. But the one thing I will say is that when you have juggling involved in opera, especially in something like Philip Glass, you run the risk, I think, of ending up in situations where the watching of the juggling becomes in your head about whether or not they're going to successfully do the juggling they're trying to do instead of admiring the thing, the movement, the action being performed. And what I mean by that is when you go to the circus, it's a spectacle, right? And the crazy things that you might see in that environment are so crazy to you because you almost can't believe that they are real. You can't believe that humans are capable of such things. And you're mesmerized by that, right? You're much less often mesmerized by 
the perfect synchronization of the juggling balls or the arcs that they trace out in the sky and how those specific shapes might have their own meanings. That I think is a lot less common. It's there, but it's less common for sure. And in the context of Akhenaten, there were scenes happening where there was a lot going on on the stage, like three separate rows of things happening all at the same time and the juggling on top. And I found myself struggling to focus on specific moments between characters in either the ensemble or the main cast because my stupid monkey brain kept getting distracted by the fact that the juggling was happening and the question was emerging in my brain of, oh, are they going to drop it? Are they going to mess it up? Like, are they going to succeed here? Oh, I'm noticing that some of the ensemble on that middle balcony level, when they're doing this motion, were supposed to be doing a motion, ignore this hand, but where you release the juggling ball and then catch it again. So you go like that. It's not going to show up on camera because of motion blur, but you basically do that and you do that and you do that, etc. But some of them were just going like this. And so I was like, I was noticing that. And then I was thinking, is that intentional? Am I just meant to see that? And then I was like, well, is that actually just that they don't want to drop the ball? And that makes me think about them dropping or not dropping the ball. Get out of here, Chad. And I didn't like that. I think that the juggling was interesting in certain areas. I think there's some kind of tie to the Egyptians there as well. It was mentioned in the program, but I didn't pick one up for this. So yeah, I just personally think that juggling in this kind of show is not to my taste, I guess. Overall, I did enjoy the show. I'm glad I saw it. I have a lot of questions, not necessarily about not understanding the story per se. I'm kind of okay with not understanding the story, but more so questions about understanding opera and why people are so obsessed with this and especially older people like what is it that i'm missing because i had a good time but like would i pay 180 quid for a ticket not in a million years so hopefully somebody out there one of you lovely folks can help me understand or just point me in the right direction for the next opera i should go and see to get a better grasp on what on earth is going on in this medium because i love me some symbolism and there's plenty of it in opera i know that that sort of thing is out there i just don't know where to even begin to begin so hopefully you can let me know